everybody, welcome to Clearwater Marina Aquarium's virtual field trip series. Now, we've been talking a lot about sea turtles and today's segment is called, Where Do Sea Turtles Go When They Get Sick? CMA. My name is Caitlin and I work in our education department as a marine life and environmental uh, specialist. So right now I am, for those of you who don't know, in our critical care facility kind of hallway. Right behind me is our surgical suite. So when we do have sea turtles who come to us uh, at our hospital, the first thing that's going to happen is our triage or initial examination of the sea turtles to figure out what's going on. So it's a lot like um, taking an animal maybe to a veterinarian, and we do have a veterinarian on staff, as well as our veterinarian technician who work together with a number of staff and volunteers to help figure out what's going on with that turtle. So we might start off with drawing a little blood, doing a physical examination to find out if there are any wounds. And we may even be able to take x-rays, and I think you can see one over on our screen right now. So that is the belly side or the plaster inside of our sea turtle. Um, in that case, we can take x-rays of their flippers and that's a great example of the difference between fins and flippers. Of course, flippers are going to have bone structure as opposed to fins, which don't have any. So today we're going to be talking to you about a couple different reasons why sea turtles come to our hospital in need. First up, we have those natural re reasons. So of course here in Florida, uh, we are prone to hurricanes throughout the summer, which happens to coincide with sea turtle nesting season, which means that sometimes when our hatchlings emerge from their nest and make it out to the waterways, they're not quite strong enough to get through those big rolling waves that we may get on our coastline. So we end up with what we call washbacks or animals that come back on shore. Uh, if we do see them, of course, we're gonna bring them into our care, allow them time to rest uh, before releasing them back out into the wild, just like any other sea turtle would. And so we have other natural causes, things like uh, fiber papillomas tumors. Now that is a tumor that can grow on the external or outside of the sea turtle as well as the inside or their internal anatomy. And it kind of looks like chewed up bubble gum sort of stuck to the side of their body. Uh, we can take a look at a photo of that a little bit later on. One other natural reason why sea turtles may come to us is because believe it or not, it does get chilly in our waterways. I know it's hard to believe here in summer, it gets very, very hot in Florida. Um, but in our winter months, our temperatures can drop below 68 degrees, which is what is ideal for a sea turtle species. Now, of course, when they do, our temperatures drop and they do become what we call cold stunned, they may end up here to rest. Um, hopefully, they don't get impacted by humans. And so a couple of unnatural uh, reasons why animals may end up in our care or human causes may start off with our boat strikes. So being that they are reptiles or cold-blooded, if you've ever, uh, if you have a cat at home or a dog, maybe their your animals like to bask in the sun because it's nice and toasty, warm for them. Um, they don't necessarily need to do that. They may seem to like to, but our sea turtles to help regulate their body temperatures may bask at the surface of the water to soak in all the warmth from the sun. Now, when that happens, of course, they do become more prone to being struck by boats. And if you remember from our sea turtle anatomy segment, they're uh, spine and their ribs are actually fused to their shell. So if they do receive a crush, crush injury, we do have to pay extra special attention to those internal organs. So we may be able to take them over to more implant hospital. Uh, if you remember in Dolphin Tail 2, Mavis, the sea turtle on Hazel's lap, and the emergency room, that scene kind of helps depict our relationship with more implant. If our turtles need something that's a little bit larger than what fits in her surgical suite here, something like a CAT scan, uh, we can go ahead and take them over there for that CAT scan to get a better idea of what's going on inside there. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at our rehab area. So come follow me. Uh, we are going to be passing by some windows and here at our first area, uh, we have a couple different pools. So it looks like we have Otis in the back right, we have Gus in the back left, 
It looks like we have a patient named Maggie May, potentially in this pool here. Um, now, of course, we don't always see our sea turtles at the surface of the water because they do hold their breath for several hours at a time. Um, but keep your eyes open. Maybe during this, we'll see a peek of their beautiful faces. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, this is rehab and there are windows. Can they see us? And the answer is no. These windows are incredibly important during our rehab process, as of course they are one way, which allows us as viewers um, and education staff members to well, but that our sea turtles can't see us. Even our staff and volunteers who do work with these animals keep as hands off as possible. So during feeding sessions, I'm out here, you typically see fish and other foods items being thrown into the pool as opposed to being hand fed like some of our residents. Reason being is that we want to interact with them as little as possible so they are as successful as possible once we release them back out into the wild. So now that we know a little bit about our windows, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the process of um, rehabilitation in general. So once an animal is rescued and arrives at CMA for rehab, each animal is given their own plan based on their individual needs of that animal as determined by the initial assessment. This may involve things like surgical procedures, medications, diets, etc. While visiting CMA, you can frequently see our sea turtles here in our rehab area, but then also, of course, our veterinary staff at work in our surgical suite, the area that we saw in the beginning of our segment. And they're gonna be taking care of our patients. They have to get things, again, like blood work and measurements and weights on our animal, and that's what they're gonna to use to measure the progress of the rehabbing patient. Now it looks like we have some of our volunteers uh, cleaning our pools. So while it is always very exciting work to be working hands on, it's not always the most glamorous part of our job that's cleaning. Uh, so if you can imagine she's using that brush up there to clean turtle poop. Hi everyone, so now we are actually in our critical care facility. So out at our sea turtle hospital, uh, we were just inside through those windows there. Again, you can tell how we can't see into those windows from here, not just because it's nice and sunny um, and it's dark over there, but because they are truly one way. So the pools that we have to, uh, my left or in front of you are the ones that we were kind of getting a view of earlier. So if you remember, um, like Maggie May and Otis, for example, are hanging out in those pools right now. And so this side of our uh, sea turtle hospital, of course, is going to be the non-quarantine area. If you remember me talking about those fiber papillomas tumors, uh, researchers have found that they are actually very contagious and for whatever reason are found most often in green sea turtles research as scientists in general to learn more about the future but for now our turtles who come to us with that FP tumor are going to be in our quarantine area so over as we pan around you're gonna see some pools that we are able to utilize here in our hospital um, for any of those patients and in the far left pool we actually have a green turtle with right now her name is Calusa again with those FP tumors we want to make sure that we keep those animals separated from the animals who don't have them uh, so they're infected and then lastly we have one other section um, I won't go too close to it because it is a quiet area of course and that is going to be our ICU of our hospital far away from anything that makes a lot of noise because those are going to be our most critical patients and we want to make sure that they are nice and comfortable and things are very quiet for them. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and head up some of our animals who have since been released. Hi everyone, so we're up here right now in our classroom and we're going to be talking about some of the animals that have come through our hospital uh, impact by humans. So we mentioned two of those human impacts already, one of them being entanglement or having something wrapped around a turtle's body or a ingestion, which oftentimes is a fishing hook for sea turtles. So we're gonna start off with our crab trap here. We do have two artifacts, our crab trap 
and our fishing pole uh, that came to us during the rehab process of some animals. So for our crop trap, if you don't know how they work or uh, a little bit about winter story, right? We have a buoy, which if you pretend this crab jump is underwater, this buoy would be floating at the surface of the water so that we fishermen know where to find their crab trap. And then there is something called a tether or a line attached to the crab trap itself. And so this box would be at the sea floor because of course crabs more often than not are going to be crawling around. They can swim because they do have a flattened appendages called swimmerettes and ideally they're going to be swimming into the crab trap and then they cannot get out and that's how fishermen are able to capture these animals. Unfortunately, while this is great for our commercial fishing, it is not necessarily great for our sea turtle species. Uh, one individual in particular was Ozzy. So I'll let you guys get a really good look at our crab trap here that we have. That while I tell you a little bit about her. So Ozzy was a female sub-adult loggerhead sea turtle who unfortunately was severely entangled in this crab trap. So that rope got wrapped very tightly around her right front flipper, so tight that it actually fractured that bone in her flipper. Remember in our anatomy, we talked about flippers having bones, fins don't. So it was uh, wrapped so tight that it cut into her soft tissue and fractured her bone at the joint. However, of course, we were able to disentangle Ozzy from this crab trap. We allowed her a very long time to recover because we had to go in and kind of clean up that wound and ensure that tissue was growing appropriately. And eventually, Ozzy passed the test and she was deemed releasable by the government as well as our veterinarian staff. And we're very excited because uh, being released back in 2015, we had a very, very uh, special occurrence. Ozzy, our loggerhead sea turtle, rehabbed with us, was the very first sea turtle to leave CMA with a satellite tag. The importance of the satellite tag includes better understanding where that individual lives. So if you can imagine on the carapace or top shell of a sea turtle, something like I have right here, Basically, it's just, it looks sort of like a brick with a little antenna sticking up. That antenna, when it breaks the surface of the water, is going to ping to a satellite. That satellite is going to then transmit that information to a receiving center. That receiving center transmits it to a computer where scientists are able to monitor her movements and put that information on a map and we've actually been able to allow access to that map so we not only we can monitor the movement of our sea turtles who are released with trackers but so can our guests and viewers alike so once ozzy was released uh, we found that she swam all the way down the west coast of florida around the tip all the way to the northern part of north carolina before her transmitter fell off which it does so all on its own. Now, if you can imagine, if you are a craftsman, you know that it takes a pretty strong epoxy to hold on a tracker on that's going to be immersed in water and could be several meters deep. And so that epoxy, while it's nice and strong and will hold that tracker, it of course is also going to be a low heat epoxy, so that way it's safe for that sea turtle. So now, moving on, we have a fishing pole behind me. Now this fishing pole was found um, kind of on the end of a sea turtle. I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes sea turtles will ingest a fishing hook and that's what happened to Flash, a sea turtle that came to us um, some years ago. And so a little bit about Flash's story as you zoom in on the fishing pole, Flash was a Kemp's Ridley. If you remember about our sea turtle species of segment, you know that the Kemp's Ridley sea turtles are one of the most endangered sea turtles, so it's very vital that we get um, all the Kemp's Ridleys that come through a door out successfully to the wild, along with all the other animals that come to us. Uh, but Flash was rescued on June 23rd of 2015, so the same year that Ozzy was released. Now that fishing hook that was 
was on the end of this fishing pole, of course, was stuck in Flash's mouth. So they're able to use um, instrumentation to remove that. If you remember the photograph of the endoscopy, uh, being able to get into the esophagus and remove the hook successfully. And Flash was rehabbed for some time before being released back out into the wild. So it's very important to remember that while we have a number of patients that come through our doors, those who live with us did not necessarily pass the test to go back to the wild. So we do attempt to rehab all of our patients. Sometimes they are successful. Um, things that they have to be able to do on their own to be considered successful are like forage for food. And so we wanna make sure that they do pass this test, that they are viable to survive on their own out in the wild so that way they have the best chance. And when they can't, they will be in human care for the rest of their life, just like the res our resident sea turtles that we have with us here today, and any that may come through our doors and stay with us in the future. But thank you folks for joining us activity, which you can find the instructions to in the link below. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye guys.